first things first you need this nut here to sit as low down as possible so for that reason I'll put it inside the base plate so I've got to take the base plate off and show you how it's fitting so I take that off a fair bit of build up of dust in there I'll just clean that out here I have my locking nut and behind that I have a roller bearing but what you can't see is how I've drilled that I drilled that out behind there so I'm going to strip this down and show you in detail now first thing I need to do is get rid of this cable tie okay that loosens everything up so I'll just turn that around just make sure this lock is on Now I'm, gonna, now I'm gonna take this off, of course. Nice and easy. Turn around like that. Little squeeze. And away we go. There we go. So that's the locking nut assembly off. And you can see there we have the roller bearing carefully take this lock off and don't don't let it spring everywhere and everything explode all over your workshop floor yeah we go there we go I've got another washer there that I didn't notice me drill and remove the excess material around there so today together here we've got approximately 18 to 20 mil of nuts and bearing so I'll put that down in there and as you can see that's now approximately 12 to 15 mil you need to carefully work out how much material excess material you need to move remove from that hole to get the correct depth so next stage we have these the roller bearing and the washer and they're held in place by the two lock nuts the two lock nuts there their purpose is to stop this threaded bar moving up into the router table now I have one of the insert furniture insert pieces here and that's a pretty effective method inside the wooden block here if you look down here you can see where I've put the threaded insert the last thing you want to do is set your depth stop you don't really need the router going too far down and you don't want to come off the springs either Okay, so that is ridiculously tight. Just clip that off. You know, I like my fishing, so I like to leave a tag end as well. Anybody who likes fishing, they know why. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I think I've overcooked it a little bit on that one. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the bolts on there and test it. Make sure you take off this locking piece before you try and use the rise and fall mechanism. Right, well, I thought I'd overcooked it, but actually it's working really nicely. So I just untie that a bit. I'm going to push that up into position. Oops. And just lock it off while I'm doing it so I can get that nut up not too tight go to the tight position and then just back it off a little bit back it off a little bit so I've got my bit of play that I might need because now this is not massively high 
high tolerance engineering I'm doing here so you do need a little bit of play so back that first nut off and then do it up okay and I'll give that a test run like I say don't forget to take the lock off Well, I'm more than satisfied with that. It works really, really well. Right, and there we go. So back where we started from. Beautifully well running router table. So, uh, the original remit is to make something that can be used for the majority of router tables. So, that, I think that is the case. That the threaded bar and the nuts and the washers, prob I mean, if it comes to more than six pounds, I'd be really surprised. But if any one of those single components fails, it's a really, really easy fix. If you can afford to permanently adjust your router, then give it a go and go ahead with it. Um, but it might be worth just getting a cheap router and going from there. You know, thanks to the guys who asked me and requested the video, because um, it's always nice to know what you guys are thinking and what you'd like to know more about uh, in the world of woodwork. Thanks for watching, thanks for all the support on the channel, and um, you know, I appreciate that. Thanks for watching, stay safe in the workshop, have a nice day.